Lord God, we thank you for your abundance of grace, for your new mercies, and for the opportunity that we have now to hear you speak to our hearts. We thank you, O oh God, that last night wasn't our last night. Lord, bless those who have needs far greater than our own. And God, right now I ask that you will use me. This little old girl who came from right in the middle of this country, five foot one, not very tall, not very wide, but very willing to be used as your instrument, to be helpful today, to offer healing and hope today. Lord, I'm going to ask that you will clear any distractions and disturbances that might not be from you, that might keep us from hearing you speak truth to us. Lord, touch my head and my heart. Use my mind and my mouth. Let there be no gap between your will and my words. In the mighty and powerful name of the one who's changed my life. In the name of Jesus and all of God's children said together with a great big shout out. Amen. Come on, do it one more time. Amen. Amen. As I was saying, guys, I really hope that this message is something that um, will resonate uh, in a deeper way for many of us today. I, I'm revisiting this subject because I've spoken about it before. And y'all know when, when I've spoken about something before and I feel compelled by the Spirit of God to speak about it again, there's a, a few reasons for that. One is perhaps I didn't learn the lesson the first time. Say amen, somebody. So God has had to reteach me something fresh and new. Or you didn't learn the lesson the first time. And so God wants me to revisit it so that we can gather it together. But there's another reason why I want to, um, to reteach on this particular subject today. Uh, I know we have some new faces here that are gathering in person with us that are new and, and some that are gathering virtually online. So I, I want you to be able to share in what I think God is, is calling us to rise up to as humans here on this earth. Last weekend, we had the privilege of being able to discuss in a broader sense the subject of the benefits of healthy boundaries. The benefits of healthy boundaries. How many of you all heard that message? And how many of you actually it did anything in your life for you? Two people? Okay, great. A little bit, a few more. <laughs> a amen. Well, um, next time we'll have to do better. But uh, my good friend, Alexandre um, Dublo, was here with us, and he is a relational strategist. And, and if you didn't get to hear it, it will be posted, but we really wanted to delve into this concept of boundaries. It's a word that we use often, uh, but I don't know that it's a word that we actually enforce. I don't know that it's a tool that we actually enforce, that and agreements, that we enforce them in the relationships that are in our lives. So perhaps today, uh, this message will help to kind of carry into that, because I do believe that some of us need to understand one of the key things we talked about last week was having commitments to ourselves, right? When you have a commitment to yourself, a non-negotiable to yourself, when you are committed to yourself, like making sure that, that one of my non-negotiables is I, I will not tolerate anything that, that tries to rob or steal what I believe is love, love to me or love that I'm trying to offer, right? And when that happens, I have to either have an agreement or a boundary put in place. Uh, respect, honesty, joy, peace, those are the kind of things that many of us are committed to at our core. And when, when something comes along that causes tension in those areas, then we have to deal with it, say deal with it. Now, oddly enough, when we don't have sound commitments in our lives, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people cannot enforce boundaries is because you don't have a starting point. You don't have something that you can actually say, you know what, this, is, I, this feels icky and odd to me, and, and I just don't know what to do about it. Well, what is it that's feeling icky and odd? Oh, this person is overstepping a boundary, something you have put in place to protect you, and 
it gets a little cattywampus when we don't understand, right? So, so this weekend, I want to go a little further in, in helping us to understand that when we do not have commitments to ourselves, they can, uh, not having that can directly and indirectly lead us into an unending cycle, a merry-go-round, if you will. I don't like merry-go-rounds. I didn't like them as a child because it's just going around and around in a circle, and it's like, where's the fun in that? But I really don't like it as an adult because it, it's a waste of my time. But here is one of the things that I believe that many of us, consciously or subconsciously, we hop on merry-go-rounds or we're in these unending cycles and we don't know how to get off of it. But today, hopefully, I can get you on a new ride. Say amen, somebody. Here is the thing that I think keeps a lot of us stuck in life. A lot of us are stuck because we don't understand that we're not made to be people pleasers. Say amen, somebody. No, we're not designed to be people pleasers. I'm not talking about healthy desire to please your, your spouse or your loved one, your significant other, your children. Um, those those are, those are healthy, healthy surface type of pleasings that, I'm, that, that are involved in those relationships. But what I'm talking about today is something different. So I'm sorry, not sorry, if I'm about to step on somebody's toes this morning. I'm convinced that one of the areas that God's children get stuck in, that's you and that's me, at some point in our lives, it's this, this, this faux need. It's a faux need. It's not a real need. It's a faux need. A real need is water and air, right? A real need is food. But, but this type of need is something that it, it, is, it affects us in our interpersonal struggles. And, and that's the need to please. The need to please. Some people say, well, teenagers, when we see it in our teenagers, we identify it because they have a high value placed on being liked and receiving the approvals of others, others, particularly their peers. But I don't want to just cast all of this on teenagers. No, brothers and sisters, us adults can fall into this trap as well. Let's tell the truth. Teenagers aren't the only ones seeking and searching for approval. Many of us adults suffer with the need to please as well. Amen. Amen. And so today, friends, I want us to deal with that. How do we deal with this issue of, of, of trying to please others? I want to start by letting you know if you believe that you, 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 you're here to please everybody, I want to break the news to you, sugar. You can't never, ever, 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 ever please everybody. See, half the room said amen, half the room didn't. <laughs> And it really becomes a problem when trying to please you starts to hurt me. When I forget about me and the commitments that I have to me, to me to be a better version of me on this earth, when I discount all of that in my chase to please you, that's a problem. Stick with me. I know some of y'all are saying, no, it's not. I love it when people please me. I got something for you too. Buckle up. But here is what, <laughs> what I want us to know. It's, it's interesting, brothers and sisters, how, how the spiritual enemy can come in and manipulate or massage the truth about pleasing people. Manipulate and massage the truth in such a way that it actually begins to hurt us and doesn't help us. How does that happen? I'm glad y'all are asking questions. It hurts us by cheapening the original design for our lives. We were not designed to please all people. Facts. We were not designed to please all people. I get it. Some of you have gotten really far in life thinking you can please everybody. And you wonder why you having, you're having so much difficulty at this point in your life. Because you have run up on somebody that they just don't seem to be pleased with you. And they tell you one thing after another after another. And you try to do something else and something more and something more. And it's still not satisfying. You want to know why? Because you're not designed to please everybody. We're not created to please every human being on this earth. Let's talk about approval. Whose approval or pleasure should we seek after? Well, one of the things in scripture, when we read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, uh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. This is God saying to Christ, this is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. This happened when he was being baptized by John the Baptist. And God says, 
I, I'm, I'm pleased. I, I, I love him and I am well pleased. So I, I want to try this again. I can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. But we can please God. So try this on for size. Just look at somebody, whoever's to your left or right, close your eyes. You ain't got to look them in the eye if you don't want to. Just, but don't, go ahead. Just turn, get your energy towards them. Just send your energy towards them. Some of y'all are being disobedient. You don't want to turn around. So just look at me and say it to me. Say this with me. Say, I cannot please everybody. I cannot say it again to them. Because they didn't get it the first time. Oh, okay. Just tell them this. I cannot please you. All the time. Some, I, I see some husband and wives and wives and wives and husbands and husbands are like, oh, Lord, thank you, God, for this sermon. <laughs> Y'all elbowing folks saying, listen up. She's she talking to you. But we can please God. Pleasing God means not living for the approval of other people. First. Right? But rather living for an audience of one who is our creator, the one who has an infinite and eternal source of approval. And I believe, brothers and sisters, if we get this little seed down on the inside of our young people, our little ones, as they continue to grow and thrive, I promise you they may have a different outlook about themselves and about the world around them if they understand that they were created to please the one who created them and not everybody else in creation who's just like them. That would really be helpful. Wouldn't you agree? But you know what? We still don't get it. So then we see in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, this, what Paul writes. He says this, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Child, every time I read that, I say, hey, man, I want to take my clergy collar off and just say, woo, woo. Now, that scripture is probably one you've never read, or maybe you have, and it's one that you, you know to be true, perhaps. However, we spend most of our lives, even after we come into a relationship with God, still seeking and searching for the approval of other people. Even after we enter into the truth with God, we still seek after the approval of are thinking, well, I don't even know. Maybe I'm a people pleaser? Well, let me you out. There probably are many more. I have found to help people to determine if they are people pleasers or not. Here's the first one. People pleasers have a hard time saying no. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand if that's you. Mm -hmm. Overcommit and if you are like but very resistant inside. You say sure I'll be there. Happy All the way home. The power of no, being able to say no, and being able to understand that that no is to protect you, not to harm you, but to help you. But some of us don't have that ability yet, so to is for you. Here's another thing: as people feel an extraordinary fear of rejection. Please don't reject me. Please like me. You don't. I'll color my hair. You want me to change my eyes? How many of you got to raise your hand? Very fear of being rejected. People. Personal thing. It, it, uh, to please, when you find it hard. I think, but I'm afraid I might hurt your feelings. Or, uh, you know, well, kind of, uh, uh, you hem and haw around the truth because you don't want them not to love the truth. But we talked about last week speaking truth in love. Say amen, somebody. You let your yes be yes and your no be no. And when you have something to say, say it, but say it in love. How many of you would say, yeah, I have a hard time expressing my true feelings? Again, raise your hand. I don't want to. A lot of us who. 
time saying, I have a hard time expressing my They think, you know, what they have to say may be so hard, but they don't want to hurt you. Or in their minds, that's what they're thinking. Here's the other thing that I think is common. Uh, people who are people pleasers take most criticism really personally. Everybody needs a healthy level of, of constructive criticism. I'm not talking about when you criticize and <laughs> but when people suffer when you, it, it becomes me. If I struggled with this issue and after this message, if someone came to me and said, oh my goodness, that was a blessed sermon. It really spoke to me. Awesome, but it was all right. about the first person who said that they're so personally and I don't the issue what I got to say take it up with God say man somebody I only get the choice of news today I what God says to say I try to com convey it to you in the best way but don't take it personally how many of you guys would say, yeah, I, I do I do that. And when I'm at work, I do take criticism really personally. I can't hear feedback from my boss when they're doing the 360 review. I, I can't hear that because, you know, I take it personally. I don't see it as brothers and sisters. Render our life instead of the opinion of God, we are elevating people into the rightful spot of where God needs to be. And when we become obsessed with what people think, God thinks. And it's real easy. If I just got my phone out right now, pay. Things you, you, mm. This will get them. Mm. <laughs> it. So, so let's talk about in the right. Because all of those things that I just explained that kind of highlights some of the commonalities of people pleasers, you could go your whole life being a people pleaser, but I promise you, that's not going to get you where you really need to be in this life as a child of God. Becoming dead. I don't see. Obey God when we're seeking to only please other people. Check this out. Here's what Proverbs 29, 25 says. Why we should not depend. Just keep what I'm saying today in context. I'm not saying don't strive to, to please your loved ones in a way you know is, is, is right. If you got the love language is giving gifts and you know that this will please the people who are in your life, and it, it continue to. I'm not talking about that type. Of, I'm talking about the kind of action where you can't you you just mm, nobody every because you're people. Here is what Proverbs twenty nine twenty five says: dangerous trap. It's a trap. But trusting the Lord, that's where safety is. People about not fear like you are going to run up on the stage and, you know, you, I mean, you might. I hope you don't. But fear. Of 
funny example. Right there front and patient up here, and then I noticed her like, I mean, just nothing over here. She is sending up going, we kept going, and after church, she comes up to me and your first time say yes I'm from Baltimore festival here with Rachel I was like great and she's like man I'm just so amazed by what y'all are doing here this whole experience it's a real vibe I really really dug what God was saying to you <laughs> my I said now say what you enjoyed this it was life And needs to be escorted to the casting B face. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Did she say that she assume the jazz engaged that does not that something that's being said is not penetrating what is happening. My fear could have gotten out of control. My fear of what she was thinking and feeling could have just really gone bananas. And everybody else that was blessed and impressed, I ain't seen none of y'all. I saw her. <laughs> objective, according to Proverbs, is to make sure that we try our safety is about us is a trap. Say trap trap, you know, thirst trap, you know, uh, you, you know, what the traps that are coming, but fearing people they are going to do, fearing what they say or think about us if we don't do a certain way. And here are those traps. I'll compromise for you traps. Are too, 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 too fearful of other people. It's the I'll compromise for you trap. This trap happens all the time. Maybe you're at work or you're at school and somebody tells a really inappropriate joke that's offensive and you know it's disgusting, but you kind of laugh <laughs> because you don't want them to think, hey, you're the religious weirdo. So you compromise your internal commitment. Financially, why? Well, they feel someone else's expectations. I will security for you trap. It's a trap. Say it's a trap. It's a trap. The I'll overcommit for you trap means where we will do everywhere to everybody, even in church. It can be manipulative and it can be abusive. Things everywhere, all time. I need you straight to W H E hockey sticks, and uh, you know that's not true. I head. And give you often some internal. Get it's a trap when you start to limit your success because of other because they might get offended oh because they said you couldn't um you you don't want to do anything that might are so afraid you in the inside of you significant in your school your community or around you but people might well I want to say that truth is the more you do and the higher God has in this life the more people going to all oh that's 
it's so good to be like y'all. Y'all have everybody liking y'all. I've had a few people. Especially when I know I'm doing the right thing at the right times. And a few times people thing. And we must understand the approval of God more than you love the opinions of other people. Approval of should be more meaningful than what your opinion is of your adult children. Their opinion, them and what they believe God might be saying might be contradictory to what you want. Doesn't mean they don't love you, but it does mean that they might be shifting gears to hard here. Because a lot of us want to have control over everybody. We want to we want to drive the car, the plane. And this is one of those ways in which we need to set. I want to put this on the screen. Stop feeling bad for enforcing boundaries. So, Mama, if you're the mother that's making a choice, is different. So stop feeling bad about some of the things you've had to do in order that you can have a clear space in your head to, to what I've learned struggle with this issue that I've counseled with over the years or people just observed over the years for people pleasing ready for it you will enforce boundaries self you will have agreements you start to recognize that um, there's some agendas in life that matter. I talked about agendas before, but it's important that if you struggle with uh, people pleasing, and it is a chronic thing that is really debilitating for you, like I said, and I will continue to say, Just listening to a message on a Sunday may not be all that you need. You may need another tool to help you. Maybe it is a counselor. Maybe it is a doctor. Maybe to someone else. You get. Is that a lot of hold us down? Those things that generally, usually, sometimes, most of the time, a result that happened to us, and. So whenever I ask you what happened to you, it's not because um, I'm just being nosy. You people say, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like that? Well, I think the question is, what happened to you? Because what happened. What has happened in our past shows over and over over as we don't really we don't we don't know how to process and how to, sometimes we need to help us with that all agreeing with so here is what I want us to understand overall it is important as we are seeking to not be people pleasers to find confidence in faith and in what Christ has to say to us Matthew 6, 33. It's one of the best sermons ever. And many First, the kingdom of things will be added to you. If we're seeking God first, and not necessarily the opinions out of fear or out of what others want, desire, or think shape the agenda of us. Because of our lives, well, here's kind of what it looks like. What you want to do, that's an agenda, right? What is it that you want to do? That's your desire. Another agenda could be what you are expected to do. That means what others desire of you. What are their desires? And then there's 
heard say call to do. That's God's desire for you. Now, I would say. Three. First. And then all of the other stuff. Matthew 6 is. is Do what God has called you to do, and the rest will take care of this new year to live a call. It may unnerve you. It may cause you to feel discombobulated. Where is pastor? Why ain't she speaking to me 24-7, 365 days out of day? Why isn't she posting on Instagram? And she's not doing all of these things. That's what you do. Determination to live a called life. What God desires of me and not exactly what you desire of me. And some of the tensions in life have been when you didn't live up to someone else's expectations of what. Now, if you're serious about living a called life and not an expected life, prepare yourself for some difficult conversations with If we'll demand conversations, say courageous conversations, courageous conversations with others. If you've been following to have courage to get over rejection, we the boundaries and now Reminding us today, for those of you who are stuck in a body, all of those things we've talked about, I want you to know if today's the day that you're saying, I'm going to what God wants me to do and not what other folk want me to do, I'm percent sure of what God wants me to do, I'm going to trust God. If that is you, then no way for you to be a people pleaser and a God pleaser. You can't do both. Oh, did that wake some people up? You thought you could have another foot in another lane? Eh, probably won't work. Holy Spirit, right? That's what needs to happen. I feel like doing I'm talking about Holy Spirit activate and get them in the right lane. Friends, you've got to be comfortable saying to people, I don't feel called to that. I'm not talking about if your brother asks you to move his stuff, help him move. <laughs> that, that, to pull out. <laughs> you know, super spiritual in that. To that, but I'll, I'll give you a minute. I want you to jot that down because that's somebody's new tattoo. And I don't. This year, friends, don't sacrifice your destiny so that someone else is okay with you. Learn that when I put people's big in my life, and God is too small. And when we reverence God, when we honor God, when God is first, when God is big enough in your life, then you will. It's big in your life and of this world, you will have all that you need. 12 verse 2. By this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. Able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good to God. You will know what is good to God. Don't of what others and what the society and what the cultural norms might be doing or saying about life. But seek to find out what God wants. God is the one thing that's consistent. God is not a trend. God isn't a fad. God isn't something that's here today, gone tomorrow. God is lasting. 
want to understand what God wants others want for me. Let me bring it home in this way. Van, y'all can get almost get ready. Oh, don't come yet. <laughs> um, whole is what Christ, how he describes being healthy and well. Some scriptures, right? Pastor Gary, he says to the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go and be made whole. And for her, whole, physically, she, uh, spiritually, she was made whole. Because now she's with others. She probably was now she ain't got so I'm looking at the what did that word have not just to be well in some areas which is still a good word it's a, a, I set out on this journey mind that I was going to be uh, whole spiritually emotionally mentally and definitely physically. And uh, I wanted all of those pieces of my life to align. Say align. Align. Now the reality is we are living beings. We are ever changing people and the people around us are ever changing and environments change and so sometimes all of those things don't get to align exactly I desire to align to live my life on purpose. Well, let's keep it real. I'm from a family of people that uh, have inherited a lot of predisposed uh, genetic situations. I think I'm a lot taller. When I come down there, some people are like, oh my Lord. It's like you got off an elevator, lady. I'm like, that's genetics. I can't do anything about it, right? Uh, it is genetics of mine. Family. Really high I good, but I can reach high educationally. Generally. BMIs, body mass index. We got high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Some of my family members are just high on some stuff that I can't mention. But high <laughs> resonates. <laughs> and we have my annual visit. What the load will be? We can we did these numbers. Your genetics, the things that you or so I said, Doctor, what's one of the things I can do so I can get medication, not have to take cholesterol medication? And because um, says that it sounds like I am dying when I'm asleep. And when she said that, I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, my God, it sounds like you're dying. She's like, yeah. But she played it for me. I was like, oh, oh, my God. It sounded like I was, like, literally dying. Like, what? I stopped breathing. She was like, yeah. So I said this to my doctor. What do you think that is? She says the same thing I've been telling you. You need to lose weight. I said, okay, weight cannot possibly be causing me to lose my breath in my sleep. She said, yeah, it could. It could actually be one of the problems. And so um, it's metabolic. You need to lose weight. And I'm like, I'm a 
nice curvy girl. She's like, yeah, but your curves got a little too much on your five foot one frame. If I don't, I might have to have an apnea machine. I was like, a sleep apnea machine? What do you mean, the thing that I got? To? She's like, yeah. I was like, now hold on, girl. I'm still single and ready to mingle. I can't be going to bed with this spaceship thing on my face. Not that anybody was going to see it, but just in case the Lord brought a husband my way. And so I was like, I lose weight. Okay, so I listened, and she'd been saying this for a while. So I made the decision in 2020 that I was going to lose some weight. And I set out on this journey. Stopped. This thing that 95% of my activities was removed. My life. For breakfast. For lunch. If my life was. Go eat. Start cooking for me and my kiddo. And while she's in school at the kitchen table I was like okay maybe I should start walking and so I would go for a walk and I'm like okay I like this this feels good the air is fresh and then I continued in my plan to lose weight so fast forward this has been happening for three years some of you perhaps disconnected with us in three years and so when you saw me last week or when you've come to church you're like oh my lord And it's not been an easy journey, but it's been a journey over three years. So I'm telling you the part, but there was a lot of mentally, emotionally, financially as well. But here's where the devil steps in. So when we regathered back in 2021, I was met by someone who said to me, many of you give me compliments look nice wow that's you look amazing feel better yeah and we we talk about those things that I've changed in my life but one person uh came to me and and this person said wow you look amazing you've lost so much weight how much you it has to be the equivalent of a small child goodness I'm not kidding this person said this out of his mouth Uh, I'm listening Impressed. are going to be able to get a lot. Of- I was like, now say what now? <laughs> he insulting me? I said, say that. Look at you. You look amazing. The church is going to really grow now. Now, wait a second. Bro, are you suggesting that all of the people that I've introduced to Jesus and reintroduced to God and reintroduced to the Christian faith or into the Christian church um, somehow came because didn't come, didn't come. Relation? Well, let me tell you something. (laughs) Now, a less secure preacher would have allowed them. If I was a people pleaser, that really would have turned one person's opinion about what they thought about what I looked like. Uh Uh-huh. Keep in mind what Romans, Romans is saying. We don't get shaped by the opinions of the world. Out. So had I not spent time not just working on my outside, but working on my inside, that mess would have really done a number on me. But instead of that, I just looked at him and I said, God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And whoever God brings our way, we will serve. That's been my commitment from day one now and today when they put me in. That will not change. And here's what I needed you to know. 
the Lord spoke to me and said, girl, that's how God talks to me sometimes. applaud you but it's because of who you are relationship you was on G connect you are fine because you're mine. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that God might be speaking that message to somebody else in this room. The thought of living the influence of what other people think about them, what other people are saying about them. And today God is looking at you and saying, baby, you are fine because you're mine. Your job or all of my other children in the neighborhood drive. I don't care what kind of labels you have or what you don't have. I don't care about any of that stuff. You're measuring up all to the false standards, but I love you. You are mine and I created you and you are mine because I made you in my image, not their image. He's in all of the inheritance of a child who is a part of my family. What on the SAT, how well you do for a living. I don't care what you report on your income taxes, your earnings. Yes, I want more for your life, but I'm not finished with you yet. God is saying to somebody today, I want to know you. You are mine. You are mine and you can feel fine. You are in a relationship with me as our band comes back. No, you can get you today. I go around of pleasing other people. You need to know the creator of the universe does not care if you're a curvy girl. God don't. God made. Some knucklehead says about teaching class, and I'll never forget. I was of only two women in the whole class. And we got up to, you know, we all had turns to get up to preach, and the, we had these things that we had to check off. They accomplished. I'm back, and I'm like, Professor, somebody check here that my dress is too inappropriate. I wrote this, and the other hand because we weren't pastors yet we were trying to become a God. anyways he, yeah I and I, I swear I had a nice dress on down to my knees you know it's too form-fitting That's a you problem, not a me problem. This ain't got nothing to do with my preaching. So I had to remember that God says to me, you are fine because you're mine, because I called you. You are living a called life, not an expected life. An expected life would have you looking like you somebody off the street who just found some clothes and said, okay, here's a message. No, that ain't even my personality. God says live into your personality. You can avoid sin and still be who you are. Live into being who God has called you to be. I know I ain't just preaching to myself. I know I'm not. The exterior of us may you know, starting new things, being better used, having this better version. Start with understanding that you need to stop something and live like air trying to please everyone else.
My commitment to God is the same. Something else. And that's what I believe God wants for all of us. And as we continue to move, Unity and yes, we have differences. Those are welcome. One is something, and someone hasn't. That's not what this is. We check that stuff at the door because of the cause and cross of Christ. This is where we find equity and safety. This is where we find beauty and wholeness. And if today where you have been struggling with didn't quite but you've been chasing and chasing afflict that on somebody else stop expecting people to what you want them to do especially if that's not what God wants them to do can you okay. I continue to feel the presence of God in this room pray for each and every one of you Thank you for the gift of life. Because you have made us and shaped us and formed us in your image and in your likeness. Thank you that today we have another faith. That our faith is stronger than our faith. Because the truth, we're all still works of improvement. You. God, today I pray that our hearts will have the desire to follow you more and more and more. Create. Lord God, I pray that your sons and your daughters that will crave, that will desire, that will chase after what it means to be faithful and available and teachable people. God, give us grace when we miss. It's because of your love, God, that we can love others. And I ask today, God, that you will the hearts of your children. This place today confident that you are the only one we must please. That your approval we seek after. God, I give you thanks. And I give you praise. might say put on what you God Father the Son and the Holy Spirit my life the one who has made me whole it's in that bless your and sin knowing the truth that you there 
there's nothing they can do about it. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Be made whole.